Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to An Academy's YouTube channel. Let's crack UPSC CSE English. So, a very warm welcome to all of you, whoever you are watching live, etc. Good evening, etc. Please, for, uh, so today, as you know, we'll be, we are continuing the course on, uh, course, a crash course on Ecology and Environment, UPSC CSE, for the UPSC CSC prelims 2020. Yes. So today's topic is the continuation of basics of ecology, fourth session, etc. In the last sessions, we have discussed about all the basics of ecology. Then this is about me, etc. Then <coughs> coming to etc. Please subscribe. So coming before starting today's session, etc. We'll be discussing about the initially. I'll be giving you a brief understanding about the an academic platform. So. It is crack UPSC CSC is the tagline for us and with this is the India's largest learning platform available online for UPSC preparation etc. What you can do you can subscribe through it etc. By you can download the Anna Academy learning app from the Play Store in your Android phone. Similarly it is also available for the iPhone users and iPad users. Please install it. Please don't install the Anna Academy's educators app that is different. This is learning app etc. Then the thing is, etc. Once you go through, you can go, to, you can get all these subscriptions, etc. All these things. Then another thing as a whole, what would you would like to tell you? You will be having access to as many top educators as possible from the UPSC platform, etc. So you have one of the best educators, people like Munal Patel, Ayush Shangi, Siddharth Tarora, Deepika Reddy Madam, Aman Sharma, Sudarshan Gurjar, all these people are available, etc. for your uh, preparation of UPSC civil services. You can get this unlimited access to the top educators. Then what will be the benefits you will be having? You will be having benefits like you will be having interactive classes, you will be having special classes, you will be having uh, structured course etc. For example, now I am discussing ecology and environment for civil services etc. You will be having a structured course here and you will be having test series that is whatever the range, the structured course or else the special classes which constitute some important current affairs classes and all these things, some doubt flaring sessions, some kind of things etc. like test series, every aspect of preparation is entirely covered here etc. Then what are the advantages you will be having etc. once you get into this an academy platform as a whole, this is you will be having easy, this is the easiest way to learn for civil service preparation via online platform because you are having a flexible schedule. So you can arrange the preparation of yourself according to the requirements, uh, according to the, according to your own requirements, etc. So you will be having, for example, if you are having one or two problems of a certain subject, you can have that problem, you can have that subject for a specific time period. In the remaining time period, you can study accordingly. Say, for example, you are having, you have, you have completed quality preparation, whereas you are not, and you are unable to prepare for civil service. You are, un, you are not having enough confidence and MCQs, but you have studied the basics part of it. So, what you can do uh, every day, you can prepare around one hour MCQs on quality. Whereas the remaining hours, etc. Say, for example, if you are not good enough in enrollment, you can listen to the classes. So accordingly, flexible schedule. Flexible schedule is by time. Flexible schedule is, is also by your mode of preparation. That is your subject, your mode of subject, which subject you want to choose, what mode of preparation which you want to do, whether you practice, wanted to excel in again, MCQs, whether you wanted to excel in, say, for example, understanding the basics, whichever is the thing which is suitable to you, you can prepare accordingly. Then you can have this in your language of your choice. Educators teach in English, medium, uh, in all the multiple languages like English, Hindi, medium, Malayalam, etc. Then you can have unlimited practice. So whatever or how many times you wanted to practice, you can have unlimited practice and all. All these will be advantages of the an academy platform. You can chat with me while you are doing this session. You can have interactive polls. You can learn anytime, anywhere. This is the most advantage which you will be having, etc. Right? right. Then coming to the <coughs> subscription, etc. So payment structures. I would suggest these are the options available for you, etc. 
but the better suggestions will always be a longer durations ones because civil services preparation itself will take around 20 months so i would suggest you to go for either 12 or 24 months that would be helpful for you in the longer run yes then <clears throat> within this 12 to 24 months etc uh, while you are subscribing for any of these courses etc see you will be having an added advantages of months for example you take 12 months course costing 40000 and you take one month course costing 8000 40 plus 8 48000 but the same thing you will be getting in 24 months for 48000 so as you increase the duration the amount which is charged is very very less but so the per month charges here it is 2000 whereas in the initial first month the per month charge is 8000 Similarly, for 12 months, the per month charges are 3,333 3, and here it is per month charges, it is 2,000. So, if you take a subscription now, for 24 months, the amount of money which you have given is just 2,000 per month. So, that's where advantages you will be having in this unacademy platform. Then another point which I would like to tell you, <coughs> excuse me, if you are using this co code VE10, this is an exclusive code from me. We will get an additional 10% discount. So 40,000 comes to 36 and 48 will come to 33,200. Then another point, etc., which I would like to tell you before discussing about the class, etc. As you know, recently, etc., because of coronavirus as a whole, there is so much amount of restrictions. So many educational institutes have closed. Have closed. So what I'm trying to tell you is, an academy is trying to help in this kind of a difficult time for a student, etc. We are trying to have as many classes as possible. We are trying to have as many around 20,000 free classes within this month as a whole, so that there is immense benefit to you. Uh, so that you can relax at your own home, you can you need not travel and you get you uh, you know you need not travel and get kind of uh, worry about the movement etc. You can sit at your home place, you can get your clarified doubt sessions can be carried etc. You can avoid these public places which I am trying to tell you, and we are trying to have around twenty thousand free sessions as of now. And we will be providing you any kind of doubt sessions, all these things, whatever the aspects are there, you can get it from an academy platform itself so that you can relax at your own place, whichever way, wherever you are sitting, etc. And concentrate on the most important thing of studies rather than about studying, uh, worrying about coronavirus and the, you know, the fear about moving across the public places. So that's what we would like to tell you. Yes. Then moving to today's session, etc. So we'll be starting the concepts, continuations of the ecological concepts, etc. So as you know, in the previous classes, what did you study? In the previous classes, we have studied about different aspects like biotic. Uh, we have studied different aspects like components of an ecosystem etc how ecosystems varies what are the different kind of species you have concepts like keystone species concepts like indicator species all those things which you have studied in the biomagnifications all these concepts which you have discussed moving forward we will be discussing about further concepts ecological concepts see i am trying to provide as many concepts as possible so that any question whichever comes across on these words you will be able to answer very well these are all static portions, but very, very important for your preparation. Yes. Excuse me. So, another concept, carrying capacity. So, what is carrying capacity? As the name suggests, it is a capacity to the extent which an ecosystem can carry it. So, that's what in a carrying capacity is. So, for any given ecosystem or a given region, Carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals of a given species that an area's resources can sustain indefinitely without significantly depleting or degrading their resources. For a given region, carrying capacity is the maximum number of individuals of a given species that an area's resources can sustain indefinitely. So, what is indefinitely? Sustain without any issues in the longer run. Given species that an area issue can sustain indefinitely without significantly depleting or degrading their those resources. 
Sir, example, if I have as we have discussed in the previous classes of a concept called keystone species. The concept called keystone species. So what happens in a keystone species? A tiger, if tiger's population as a whole will reduce, what is happening in his deer population is increasing. If this increases, what happens? It leads to herbivorous growth that is in general and wherever top level predators are reducing, herbivorous growth will increase leading to death of plants and animals and degradation of ecosystem. So what happens? It is nothing but as deer population has increased, carrying capacity of that ecosystem as a whole has been reduced. It has been reduced. Carrying capacity, there is a limited carrying capacity as the deer population has increased, the capacity the ecosystem can sustain has crossed and because of which degradation of the ecosystem has happened. So, whenever you are considering for a carrying capacity, you have to consider three factors. The things like, what is the amount of resources available in the ecosystem? To what extent they can sustain? And what is the size of the population? So, this is what I am discussing here. Size of the population. Then, amount of resources each individual is consuming. So, keeping these factors, etc., carrying capacity will be identified. As you discussed, invasive alien species. When a species like invasive species enters, what happens? The size of the population of that particular, the size of the population of that particular species is increasing and leading to amount of resources each individual is consuming. For that population is increasing, for the remaining population it is decreasing, thereby carrying capacity is affected. So what is similarly carrying capacity is nothing but capability of an ecosystem to sustain as many, as many species as possible right then same concept i will try to explain in a diagram you can see here a diagram x axis we are providing by time y axis you are providing by population so carrying capacity if you indicate if a carrying capacity for example a carrying capacity of an ecosystem is stable so carrying capacity as you know here it is stable if this is the carrying capacity, what happens? Initially, to what extent the population can be sustained by an ecosystem is indicated this graph, green color graph line, etc. If it until now it can sustain, if the population is increasing in this fashion, continuation, what is happening is population of a certain species is increasing beyond the capacity of a certain ecosystem. So, if this happens, ecosystem as a whole will be increasing because carrying capacity is only up to this point, which is more or less stable. So, this concept is one of the indicator of how an ecosystem is surviving. So, I hope this concept is clear. Carrying capacity is nothing but amount of organisms with a region that the environment can support sustainably. Yes, this word sustainability is very very important so many times so many lecturers so many people will be using this word sustainable etc it might be a cliche word you might be bored of it but the significance of this word sustainability can never be questioned at all right yes moving forward to the next topic so next we'll be discussing about something called biotic interactions So, biotic interactions. So, what is biotic interactions, etc.? The way animals are interacting with each other. So many times, as I have told you, etc., ecosystem is equal to biotic plus abiotic factors plus energy flow. Plus energy flow. So, biotic interact. We have discussed about abiotic factors, how they influence, how they vary. You have, will be discuss, you have discussed so many varieties of biomes, biotic bio, plants, animals, etc. What is there? We have discussed the food chains and all these things. Within among the animal species, there is something called biotic interactions, which you will be discussing. Right? There are so many things. So, for example, say for example, there are two species. So, there are two species A and B. So, two species. A and B. 
so how these two species are interacting with each other whether this interaction is positive for both animals or whether it is negative for both animals or whether it is positive and negative for one animal and negative positive for one and negative for one or else whether it is negative for one animal and neutral to one animal so yes so neutral so sometimes what happens the interactions might be both species might be benefited or one species might be benefited or else one species might be significantly negatively affected or else there is no negative effect at all that means when you are discussing about all these things there is a positive interaction negative interaction negative and there is also a neutral interaction yes just a minute yes so what i am trying to say as two animals two species are interacting a and b just a minute yeah, yeah. so two species a b as they are interacting there might be positive interactions that is positive there might be negative there might be no positive or negative there might be neutral there might be neutral interactions so these three interactions etc where they can be asking around certain kind of questions as a whole yes positive negative and neutral so first one etc mutualism mutualism is nothing but mutualism this is nothing but etc where mutual as the name suggests mutual that is nothing but both species will be benefiting so they when the interaction is happening between these two species as a whole both species will be benefiting example etc lichens lichens etc which are here is pronounced etc they live in a symbiotic relationship with wind lichens are combinations of fungus and algae and they live in a symbiotic relationship yes symbiotic relationship symbiosis any kind of symbiosis etc symbiosis so there is a interaction where both species a and b are having positive effects on each other so this is called symbiosis where both species where i can say both species are mutually dependent on each other or both are having positive effects so that's what we have to biotic interactions mutualism is a type of interaction both species are what is the effect both species are benefited what are the examples which i am giving you one lichens it is a combination of fungus and algae both are benefited from each other similarly corals corals is a symbiotic relationship between yes two or what are the two organisms Yes, corals symbiotic relationship between yes people whoever are watching it online live etc please that is what, what i mean here is people who are watching live yes please provide the answer in the chat section etc corals are a symbiotic interaction between yes i'll be giving you around a some time limit 1 minute within 1 minute you have to answer corals are a symbiotic relationship between which species
yes time up so corals or a symbiotic relationship between what algae and zooxanthellae algae and coral animals so the coral species etc hard corals so while we discussing coral ecosystems i'll be telling you that corals are a symbiotic relationship between zooxanthellae and corals corals require a food they cannot prepare food on their own etc algae require a home so corals are providing home for algae whereas algae is providing the food for the corals so coral is also an animal yes yes you heard it correct corals are also a animal so it's a combination of symbiosis so one is getting food the other is getting a habitat because of that there is a mutual interaction which you call it as mutualism so biotic interaction mutualism what happens in a mutualism both species benefit they might ask a question so once they ask the question lichens are a symbiotic relationship between a b c d so one of the option is fungus and algae that is the answer which you are supposed to write so that's what i told you so many times etc so many times i have told you the kind of questions which are asked in this exam as a whole are sometimes within this concept which i am telling you etc are very basic in nature we should have a proper understanding of the concepts whatever the classes discussion whichever i have whichever i am telling you etc if you listen all the topics carefully automatically you will understand so many things then coming to the next top, top point which commensalism so commensalism is nothing but where one species is benefited and the other species is not at all affected so what is it positive one species is benefited and the other species is not at all affected at all so because of this etc what happens one species is benefited other species is unaffected so this is positive and neutral rather i will say neutral okay we will put it as word n positive and neutral so here what happened it is both species benefiting positive positive right then example etc trees and epiphytes so what is an epiphyte yes what is an epiphyte epiphyte is nothing but yes once again now i'm not be providing one minute yes half a minute what is an epiphyte please answer you in the chat section yes quickly yes quick quick what are epiphytes yes see some people <laughs> this whenever i ask these kind of questions usually whether it is online or offline the, the kind of students which i'll be seeing some students are confident they know the answer but they would not be telling it because of the fear of what will happen if it is a wrong answer so you should be strong enough in yourself you should be understanding about concepts and you should be bold enough about even to speak so this word bold enough to speak you have to be bold enough yes epiphytes are nothing but anyhow let's start epiphytes are nothing but trees which are growing on another tree so epiphyte is a small plant which is growing on a tree so for example etc if this is a tree yes if this is a tree then on the branch of on the trunk etc if there is another tree which is growing a small plant which is growing in this fashion so this plant we will call it as epiphyte what is get epiphyte this plant is getting all the nutrients food the nutrients and everything etc from this big tree whereas a small tree it is not it is getting the positive things 
and the big tree because of the kind of resources which it has more resources it is able to feed it very easily and there is no negative effect to it at all right because of there is no negativity what happens epiphytes as a whole are having a epiphyte the tree so the trees which are surviving on another trees are called epiphytes and they are neutral they are they are positing positive influence and the big tree is neutral because it is not being having any kind of negative effect so because of which etc the species is benefited the other species is unaffected and where do you find epiphytes yes another uh, question once again hope today so many questions i am on a roll yeah <laughs> epiphytes another question where do you find epiphytes so let's give in an options now epiphytes etc a it is tropical evergreen forest b deserts c it is sir example taiga region d all of the above all of the above yes once again half a second half a minute sorry please answer where do you find epiphytes a tropical evergreen b desert c taiga d all of the above please answer in the chat section very quickly Yes, answer is A. Tropical evergreen forest. See what is the indicator here? Epiphytes, etc. Commensalism. The indicator which I told you. The species are getting as many. The species is getting enough resources. Wherever there is high resources, things like uh, water, which is very high in tropical evergreen forest, because where is there is a cycle of events, etc. More trees, etc. All these things. There is enough resources because of which you will find epiphytes as a outcome yes that is commensalism yes sanshuman you are right answer is a tropical evergreen forests then moving to the next point competition etc as it is, as the word itself says competition adversely affects both species two species eating same food etc because of which etc there is a positive influence of negative and negative so competition adversely affecting both species two species eating same food so what is the example etc which you can say say example lion and a hyena yes lion and hyena so in a within a certain area both animals usually tend to have same kind of prey so the these are the predators lion and hyena and both usually tend to have, uh, tend to kill same kind of animals so prey predator relationship etc two species eating same food wherever it is etc that is competition there is always a problem from point of adversely affecting both species then next point predation and parasitism yes next point this is it predation and para citizen so what happens in a predation on a parasitism parasite or a predation one species is benefited the other is harmed one species benefits other is harmed so all parasites you are having a positive influence on one animal one species benefit the other is harmed so there is a negative influence for example prey predator relationship a lion and a deer lion is benefiting because it is getting the food and a deer is being killed there is harm similarly parasites a virus in our body so all the bugs 
usually tend to have what happens most of the time it's parasites what will they happen in our body they are having getting parasites they are getting the food and the all the things from our body where else in return what we are getting is some negativity yes so all the parasites usually are benefiting and the other species is being harmed so predation and parasitism as a whole is where then the another kind of interaction whichever you have is called amensalism amensalism so in amensalism what happens one harm one is harmed the other is unaffected one is harmed the other is unaffected at all so this unaffected ones one harmed another is unaffected example etc a large tree shading a small plant a large tree shading a small plant for example in a certain places etc what happens is there is a very very big tree underneath the big tree etc you cannot uh, and it is providing a shade to a small plant because of which etc what happened the big tree is unaffected whereas the small plant is unable to get enough sunlight because of which photosynthesis will be harmed is unable to they cannot it cannot do photosynthesis and as a which it is get not getting able to for, uh, feed itself because of which etc that small plant will be slowly will be losing the energy and no, no food for it so this kind of things which we call it as amensalism so based on which etc a large tree shading a small plant is called amensalism based on which we have now discussed the types of biotic interactions etc based on these biotic interactions as a whole mutualism positive positive commensalism positive other species is unaffected neutral a competition negative negative predation and parasitism positive and negative one species benefits positive other species having negative positive negative amensalism one harmed other is unaffected a large tree shading a small plant a positive negative so sorry negative and unaffected neutral so this is about the type of interaction they might ask you a question which of the following are the example of amensalism a b c d or else which of the following is not amensalism which of the following best describes amensalism they might ask a question on that or else similarly consider the following statements a which of the amensalism is so and so b uh, this is an a large tree sharing a small plant is an example of amensalism which of the following statements are correct only a only b only c only d so whatever way they can ask they can frame questions on these kind of topics as a whole we have to be thorough and this is a very very static portion of preparation right this is about uh, biotic interactions moving to the next chapter ecological succession ecological succession so until now we have discussed about so many varieties of uh, the concepts of ecology etc one of the last topics last but one topic rather ecological succession so what is this ecological succession as a whole so what we know we have now until now discussed so many community response to the environment for example if there is high kind of the environment whichever we are living if it is very kind of favorable to us there is more growth there is an example of just now we have discussed the concept of epiphytes because of the kind of environment which you find in tropical evergreen forest where there is more amount of resources what we are actually finding is the as aspect of community response to environment is there is one plant feeding on a big tree which we call epiphyte so this is one community response similarly etc how plants are plants and animals are reacting whatever thing we are saying that there is a method through which the ecosystem as a whole will respond this is what community response is community means the group of plants and animals etc which are responding towards the environmental conditions so now ecological succession is 
this is also an another aspect of community response but this is over time how the community is responsible responding over a period of say for example 100 years or 1000 years how the communities are responding towards an environment over 1000 years is called ecological succession for so example we have heard about ice age yes ice age where there is no so much amount of ice around the globe because of ice ages what happened how the community responded once ice there is an ice age then over a period of time there is also a melting period so there is also once again ice age there are around four periods of glacial melting and uh, all these things four glacial periods interglacial periods so this is nothing but environment as a whole changing over thousands of years how the animals are responding to it is what I call ecological succession another aspect of community response to environment over time so what is this ecological succession is the gradual and fairly predictable change in the species composition of a given area is called ecological succession how the species as a whole gradual and fairly predictable change in the species composition of a given area is called ecological succession how the change which is predictable which is gradual in nature in the composition of a species is happening in an area over a time period is called ecological succession so what we are discussing here etc see an important characteristic of all communities is their composition and their structure constantly change in response to the changing environmental conditions these changes lead finally to a community that is near equilibrium with the environment and that is called a climax community for so example imagine that there are certain by, uh, interactions etc so for example you can understand the concept like how the life itself has been formed on the earth's surface yes how do you think that life on the earth's surface has been formed there is a what do you say an evolution which is gradual and which is predictable in the species composition of a given area for example do you think that all the varieties of species whichever you have are there right from the point where earth life has started no definitely no so species have also has been gradually evolved with respect to the changing environmental conditions yes based on which itself ecological succession is how this succession is happening so what i'm trying to say how the gradually and fairly predictable change in the species composition is happening is called ecological succession yes before discussing the concepts here let me give you by a diagram based on which i will try to tell you imagine that there is a certain area here there is a bare rock surface bare rock surface or else i think have you ever heard uh, in a pacific ocean across the volcanoes there is a new island which might be created new island which might be created because of volcano eruption because of volcanoes because of volcanoes etc imagine that a new island has been created so initially what happens there is a bare rock there nothing no animal species nothing etc what is a volcano whatever the sediments whichever are there etc that has been erupted lava lava and lava has been slowly cooled down as it cools down there will be some kind of minor rocks which will be developed that bare rock surfaces we call it as bare rocks so once the bare rocks develops do you find a vegetation immediately there definitely no as the bare rock initially bare rock will be there and from slowly etc lichens these will be developed what happens with lichens algae and fungus etc they will be developing and as they die there will be some amount of decay of organic matter this decay of organic matter etc slowly as some kind of uh, plants small plants small grasses etc will be developed lichens etc as they die then these lichens as a whole small plants as they develop based on the organic matter of the lichens etc these plants as a whole once again as they decay etc there will be further grasses and perennials and finally over a period of time etc grasses shrubs shade intolerant trees etc there will be some trees which will be growing all these things etc so you are having some variety of species 
and one one these species are developed there is a competition among these species or well, just now we have discussed prey predator relationship as there is competition among these species etc there is a tug of war so as darwin theory says survival of the fittest finally one species as a whole will be surviving that species which survives at the end we call it as climax community that species etc which is able to suit towards its uh, con environmental conditions initially is called a pioneer species the species which are intermediate etc where there is some kind of a tug of war we call the species as intermediate species and remember these things might happen over hundreds of years the movement so just now we have discussed what is this ecological succession gradual and fairly predictable change in the species composition so gradual because hundreds of years and fairly predictable change in species composition is called ecological succession then these changes lead finally to a community that is in near equilibrium with the environment finally one en one species has become a dominant species of that area because the needs of this species and the requirements which the environment provides here both are in tune with each other the needs of this species and the environmental conditions which this in a certain environment can so can provide as an habitat both are matching as that matches that community which is a climax one climax what is climax here that means there will not be any kind of further changes i think you will be hearing this word climax in movies so what is the climax scene etc where there will not be much kind of changes so that climax is what is called climax community then species etc which are trying to adapt towards this and where there is a tug of war where there is some kind of a clash between the existing species that is called intermediate species and the species initially which they are suitable were called as pioneer species this is what is called ecological succession yes once again now you can study another aspect of what is ecological succession it is nothing but a community response then what is happening here whatever the in general an important characteristic of all community is that their composition and structure constantly change in response to the changing environmental conditions the changing environmental conditions the structure and the composition of all the communities also will be changing these changes lead finally to a community that is in near equilibrium with the environment that's what i told you as why do the communities are changing their composition and structure because they are adjusting to the environmental conditions i think if you remember for a period of time i discussed this certain concept called adaptation adaptation is a trait and a process it is a process through which animals try to adapt towards harsh environmental conditions once they have adapted towards an environmental condition when the environmental condition is constant more or less constant that species will survive if the environmental conditions vary which usually happens in times of a thousands of years once again there will be change in the composition so the species which are more or less etc trying to adjust and trying to be settling in a certain area we call that species as we call that process as ecological succession and the process of movement as climax community so the end ones so these changes lead finally to a community that is near equilibrium with the environment so the needs of the animal species and the environment which it can provide both are matching that species is called climax community was i told you this change is orderly and sequential which is happening parallelly with the changes in the physical environment as the environment changes these also happening sir example what happens is <coughs> you take the europe so you take the entire europe as a whole yes imagine this is the europe region so initially there is kind of uh, so this is norway sweden finland this is russia northern russia siberia here etc right so imagine this is the northern part of uh, europe so what happens now the glacial period so for so many years whatever the animals are there they are surviving here all the 
kind of species of the animals uh, some animals like uh, for example all the species of ice animals etc which they survive in the cooler climates cold climates they are finding here in norway sweden finland because of interglacial periods as the glacial uh, because of the glacials as a whole as they have increased cooling has increased they started moving towards south because the environment is suitable to them until here and once there is melting of the glaciers once again they started migrating towards north and in process wherever certain animals etc for example in between you are finding alps mountains so alps mountains temperature will decrease as altitude increases certain species are developed here so what i'm trying to say is the species which you find in norway sweden finland and the species which you find at the topmost level of uh, what do you say of alps mountains both are one and the same why they are one and the same because the animals have moved migrated as they are adjusting to the environmental conditions as there are certain areas where the altitude is very high this migration they did not migrate they settled in alps whereas other animals started settled only in europe so in that way ecologically etc certain animals are able to suit only in certain area so this primordial movement what they are trying to change we can call it as an ecological succession yes this is an example how they are adapting etc so this change is orderly sequential parallel with the changes in the physical environment as the environment changes the see usually animals etc they can migrate but plants they don't migrate how that their plants as they without their migration how they are uh, trying to adapt that is what is ecological succession is is orderly it is sequential because there is a sequence it is also parallel with the changes in the environment during succession what happens some species colonize an area what do they do they colonize an area their population becomes numerous whereas population of other species decline and even disappear that's what i told you uh, darwin's theory of survival of the fittest survival of the fittest survival of the fittest then this entire communities which successfully change in a given area are called as seas the sequence of communities is called as a seas the individual transitional communities are termed as serial stages or serial communities so this is what this is one seer this is another seer this is another seer the way they are interacting as a whole etc where there is kind of what you say see entire sequence of communities that is successfully changing in a given area are called as seers the individual transitional communities are termed as serial stages or serial communities sequence is called seer excuse me <coughs> then another point etc succession is a process is a process that starts in an area where no living organisms are there that is there could be areas where no living organisms ever existed say a bare rock I just now i have given an example or else there is also a new volcano created then immediately how this succession as a process is happening when primarily so there is some kind of another succession called primary succession primary succession is where there where the succession is happening on a new area where there is newly cooled lava bare rock newly created pond reservoir etc when succession happens it is called primary succession or else there is also a called secondary succession which begins in areas where natural biotic communities have been destroyed such as an abandoned farmland burned or cut forests or lands that have been flooded imagine sir example etc as there is kind of a certain forest within this forest etc let us once again study create a story keystone species has been uh, slowly depleted because the keystone slowly has been depleted the entire ecosystem has collapsed now what happens once again as the keystone species comes back what will happen etc as the keystone species comes back the entire cycle of the food chain etc will be coming back that's why this lion is called as the king of the jungle the lion which for and for the kids etc while you are showing a movie it is called as king of the jungle because it is nothing but identification of how it is very crucial for the other animals to survive if this lion as a whole collapse, 
yes so this is what ecological succession is yes i think this point is clear what is primary succession primary succession is a succession process which occurs on newly created areas like a newly cooled lava that is after volcano eruption or a bare rock or in a newly created pond or a reservoir similarly secondary succession occurs in an area where there might be some kind of a destruction see now the destruction here it has happened because a keystone species has been lost in my example or else there is kind of a uh, now keystones there might be flood there might be a drought there might be another kind of things secondary succession begins in areas where natural biotic communities have been destroyed because of some things say example some things like destruction of a keystone species or abandoned farmlands or burned or cut forests or land that have been flooded since some soil or sediment is already present here succession is faster in secondary rather than primary succession so secondary succession is faster than primary succession because primary succession has to create new soil yes soil soil as a whole has should be created because of this etc secondary succession as a whole will be happening very very quickly so this is what ecological succession is it is nothing but please remember it is nothing but aspect of community response to environment over time which is gradual fairly predictable etc yes. there is a question which was asked in this yes, please identify in the grasslands trees do not replace the grasses as a part of ecological succession because of trees do not replace the grasses because of because of ecological succession because of a insects and fungi b limited sunlight and paucity of nutrients c water limits and fire d none of the above yes once again half a minute please try to answer yes i am watching in live chat i am seeing the i am seeing whoever whoever is able to answer i'll be following him yes answer in the grasslands trees do not replace the grasses as part of an ecological succession because of yes now you see every ecological and a species etc every kind of an area whichever is there whatever happens is it is there it is nothing but it is nothing but interaction of biotic plus abiotic plus energy field so how many times i'll be using this word you might be bored of it but that's it that's what you have to discuss unfortunately even though you are bored i have to discuss no doubt yes in the grasslands trees which are part of biotic do not replace grasses because the abiotic is limiting factor so it is having a limiting factor abiotic factor which abiotic factor acts as a limiting factor so that trees are unable to change to grasses which is part of biotic because you are having here in a grasslands you will be having water limits water limits this is the answer c is the answer etc and water limits because eco grassland is nothing but lack of water because there is no water less water it is only able to provide only for grass not for trees because that's why trees do, do not replace the grasses as part of ecological there is always a limit and there is always frequent fires etc where there is regeneration of grasses and all whatever happens etc water is a limiting factor answer is c this is how questions are framed you should be thorough with conceptual clarity without this conceptual clarity you cannot answer these kind of questions as a whole yes that's a very very important point you cannot answer no conceptual clarity not able to answer limited sunlight so let's see other options now just for your curiosity limited sunlight there is no concept of limited sunlight in a grassland grasslands usually are 
having decent enough of sunlight. Insects and fungus, they are not that primary indicator. It is always the water limits. Yes. That's it about today's concepts. I think you have understood these concepts like biotic interactions and ecological succession very well. Tomorrow we will be discussing about this concept called biogeochemical cycles. Yes, I hope you have understood the concepts very well. Thank you very much. Good evening to all of you and have a good night. Have a good day. And please be careful about coronavirus. Avoid as much amount of subscription, as much amount of public places and all, etc. Sit at your home. Whatever the non-important things, etc. Everything can wait unless and until it is very, very serious, etc. Please don't go into public places. You be a good citizen. Be a good citizen. Majority of the coronavirus can be stopped only by what you do. So please do it, etc. Before doing that. Please subscribe to this Unacademy's platform, etc. Use my code VE10 to get 10% discount and enjoy the classes. And this is the time as you are unable, cannot go anywhere, etc. This is the time where you can complete as much syllabus as possible, complete it, etc. Once the climate as a whole settles, once the number of cases reported of coronavirus in India will reduce, then automatically you can go to as much of you can once again come back to a normal position. As of now, avoid all kind of non-important things. Thank you. Have a nice day.